verbs, right? So remember when we do verbs, we have building blocks, we have the tense stem, that's everything except for the connecting vowel and personal endings, right? Now we, we combined the connecting vowel and personal endings when we learned our primary actives. That won't always be the case. Uh, this is from uh, last night, but, but Professor Tucker, you can see we have primary active endings. We're going to get to secondary actives. We're going to get to middle passives. We have three other verbal endings we'll eventually learn. Uh, and those will be later chapters, but we won't learn those with connecting vowels. So tense stem, then you have connecting vowels, and those are omicron and epsilon, and then personal endings. Now, uh, this is something you've already seen. We learned omen as the connecting vowel plus personal ending, lu being the stem. It combines to form luamen. Nothing crazy, lexical form being lua. Now, contract verbs are when two vowels decide that they like each other and the two become one flesh, and this is Genesis in grammatical form. So uh, the, the stem that ends in a vowel merges with the connecting vowel of the personal endings, and they tend to, to come up with a different looking form. So what you're memorizing are the various different vowel contracts. So you're going to memorize them in two forms. You're going to memorize them like equations, just like square stops. And then you're going to be really familiar with the ones of omicron and epsilon, because those are the ones that come up the most frequent. So make sure that you're really looking into them. And, and the idea is, when you're looking at a word that looks kind of weird, you can work your way backwards. So if I see something with an alpha and a subscripted iota, I can work my way backwards to know that alpha plus epsilon is alpha, Plus that iota is an alpha as a iota subscript. So the whole thing is to be able to work your way forwards and then to be able to figure your way out backwards. It's like a puzzle. Okay? So here we've got agapao, and that's what you want to memorize for the lexical form when you have to parse it. Agapao, not agapo. Okay? And then that alpha combines with the amen to come up with omen. Alright? So it just looks a little bit different. You'll get really used to this, okay? It's something that, that will become second nature to you. It's going to feel weird because verbs are new. But when you see a circumflex and a, and a quirky looking vowel, you'll know, all right, some kind of contracted thing has happened. So how do you know you're dealing with a contract verb? The first thing is you're going to remember your lexical forms. When you see something that kind of looks like agapao, you're going to think, oh, agapao. The stem ends in a vowel. So you're going to remember that and know that you're dealing with the alpha plus all of these endings. You can be able to work your way backwards that way. Then you're also going to notice the circumflex over the contracted vowel. If I remember agapao, then I can ask myself, alpha plus what equals omega? It's going to be like third grade math class. Okay? So that's how you work your way through that, and then you know the answer is omicron. This is second per or excuse me, first person plural. All right? So we're going to get used to this, memorize them as equations. So on your exams, you're going to get alpha plus blank equals omega. Then you're also going to get probably tricky ones where it's going to say alpha plus upsilon equals psych. That is a uh, diphthong. So make sure that you remember the difference between contracted vowels and diphthongs. All right? So just so you know, that's for later, for the final. We've got tons of time. And be familiar with what they look like in the field. All right. So I'm going to go through the first warm-up. And then I'm also going to go through the first sentence, and then we will dig in for today. So I'm looking at a little bitty phrase. Let me get my notes up here. All right? And I have uh, only one. I need to simplify my punctuation. That's all I got, right? So then my verb here. I've got a noun in the genitive, and a here is a noun in what case? What case? What case is? What case is? Oh. Accusative plural. Accusative. Accusative plural. All right. Now, so this is likely going to be the direct object. That means that this guy is going to have the subject all rolled into one. So I see this circumflex. That tells me, ding, 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 I'm dealing with a contract verb. And then I remember that this looks awfully a lot like tereo. And I, so then I see, okay, the stem ends in an epsilon. The final form is an omicron upsilon. 
And I remember my, my endings a little bit, right? O, A, S, A. I'm in it too. I'm so. in. So if I added an epsilon plus an omicron from amen, do I get this contract? Yeah, so what ending am I dealing with here? Which one? First person plural. So this is we are keeping, we are keeping his commandments. Does that make sense, kind of how you get there? Okay, so I'm going to do one more. 